Salwete, hello guys. Uh, welcome back to 6th grade Latin. I hope you had a good weekend. Alright, let's get into it. I have a few housekeeping things before we check the uh, parsing that you guys did last Wednesday. So we're going to do a few more Chapter 7 translations today and Wednesday. We'll try to do all the rest of them on Wednesday. Might be a slightly longer video. So then on Friday, we can take a Chapter 7 vocab and translation quiz. So you guys are already... Uh, coming to a conclusion for chapter 7, so hopefully the third declension is getting pretty familiar to you. Uh, we will do one translation, you will enter it into the form, and it'll be something we've seen before. So on Wednesday I might show you the, the, the possible translations I will be drawing from. And then there will be 10 vocabulary words, so it'll be 10 of these, uh, which are mostly you know third declension nouns, though we do have two new prepositions with post and sub, a new adjective with noas, and then two new verbs, uh, but most of the nouns are third declension, with the exception of a few old ones. And uh, I'll, you know, p uh, pick ten of these, write them in Latin, and you'll write them in English, and I'm lenient on spelling. So it will be a little more tricky than usual in that it won't be matching, necessarily. I might do half of them with multiple choice, but at least some of them you'll just have to, to know. Um, okay, also... Uh, really good job for most of you guys turning in those uh, those parsed words from Wednesday's form. Though if you there's a handful of uh, you sixth graders I'm having a little bit of trouble uh, getting in touch with. So this is not your job at all. But if you happen to be you know talking to any friends in this class who are out of the loop and they're not maybe they're not getting the links to the Latin. I don't, I'm not sure what it would be, but you can always offer to them to try to email me themselves or have their parents email me at Mr. Catalanello at ltaeagles.org. So this probably does not apply to most of you, but if you happen to be talking to a classmate who's like, oh yeah, I haven't been getting links to uh, to the, the Latin homework or anything, I don't even know what that is, then uh, help me get in contact with them. Guys, we don't want anyone to be left out. All right, so let's check uh, these eight words that you guys told me the case of on Wednesday. And by the way, I hope that video on Friday uh, was a useful refresher for, for people who are still getting used to the third declension. All right, let's go through these, and we're going to use these two charts as our buddies. Remember, masculine and feminine nouns in the third declension all in, in a certain way, whereas neuter third declension nouns are slightly different in their nominative and accusative, just like second declension. All right, so Carmina, that would be an ablative. So as you can see, I bolded the ablative ending. Uh, this E without a macron on it, or just really any noun ending in, in an E, that should be a pretty clear indication that it is third declension ablative. I suppose the only other thing it could be a second declension vocative, but you guys know how rare the vocative is. So if you see a third declension noun with an E at the end, that's ablative singular, and that's all it can be. All right, number two, regibus. What was a regibus? Oh, it's right there, uh, since we use rex regis as our example. That is dative or ablative plural, that ibis ending. Uh, just like the third dimension ablative e ending, it's pretty distinct, right? That ibis should really stand out to you. It's a new version of the ease ending from first and second declension, the long is. Tempora, number three, what is that? It could be nominative or accusative plural. As long as you put one of those for your answer, you're fine. Uh, so tempora, we're going to use, we're going to look at the, the example we, we had with tempus, which that's what this word is from. Tempus, along with corpus, nomen, and carmen, are our only neuter third declension nouns meaning they get this A for their nominative and accusative plural instead of the ES of masculine and feminine third declension, okay? That should remind you of second declension neuter words like dona, or I'm sorry, donum and exitium and uh, periculum. Uh, good, 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 good. All right, tempura. Um, it sounds like tempura, the, the fried stuff they put in sushi. Nominus. Uh, what is this I-S ending? That is genitive. So remember, the third declension, the nominative, can be any ma uh, manner of endings. But genitive will always be I-S. So that I-S actually stands out a good bit. It is not the same as our first and second declension, ablative and dative plural, which is a long I-S. I'm careful to put those macrons uh, for, for the, those endings. So if you see just a normal I-S, that's genitive. It's probably possessive, okay? Okay, moving right, right along to nox. Now that one might have thrown you for a second because we don't technically have this vocabulary word, uh, but I use it as an example when we first talked about the uh, third declension. And this is just good old nominative, so. Uh, nominative is it's gonna end in 
any kind of way. So when we're actually talking about the endings themselves, we just put a question mark there because we don't know how third declension nouns are going to end. Um, we know about the other one, the other cases, but not nominative singular. Uh, we actually have a whole bunch of them that end in X, but not all of them. Some of them end in other letters. Uh, almost half the alphabet could be the ending of a nominative. Third declension. Kiwi totem is accusative. Um, so just like first and second declension, accusative singular likes to end in M. So we have AM for first, UM for second. Now we have EM for third. Okay. Okay, last two mores. Or in English, we would maybe just say this mores. And that is accusative or nominative plural. Yeah, it could be nominative or accusative plural. So just like second and neuter, where the U-M could be nominative or accusative singular, and the A can be nominative or accusative plural, we're, we're going to see increasingly more overlap between the subject case and the direct object case, right? Subject and uh, or nominative and, and accusative. Uh, and then Paki from Pax Pacus is going to be dative. So now I've color coded all of them to reflect our little uh, color code guide up at the top. So Pecky would be dative, it'd be, it'd be giving something two piece or maybe doing something four piece, the rare dative of purpose we haven't seen too much. But yeah, Carmina, uh, uh, number one, that would be ablative. So I've been using green for ablative. Regibs could be ablative or dative. So it could be an object of a prep or an indirect object. So I made it green and blue. Tempora could be a subject or direct object accusative. So I'm putting one of the letters in red. But the, it could just be a subject, and I guess I just leave them uh, in the black font for subject. Nominus is genitive, so it's pink. Nox is nominative, so it's black. Kiwi totem is uh, red accusative, though it could be a dark red if it's an accusative object, if it's like the object of propter or post. Mores is the same thing in that it could be, well, not quite the same thing. It could be uh, accusative plural or nominative plural, um, so it's half red. could be a subject, though. And then Paki is blue for dative. All right, guys, feel free to pause on that screen. Um, obviously, you can go back through this video at any point to review any of this. And now for today's form, I'm just going to have you work through number one. All right, and number two is a bonus. If uh, you are left unsatisfied by number one, you can translate number two on your own, and I'll check that uh, tomorrow. But that's a very well-known quote. Um, yeah, I'm going to flip ahead to color code these. All right, unless you just really, if you're, re you know, really dying to uh, translate on, on on hard mode, you should uh, pause on the, the next and last slide of the video, wherein I color code all the words. But yeah, if you don't want that, you can just press pause here and be done for the day. Enter in your translation of number one uh, for before you're done with today's class time, and then spend any additional time checking over the linked uh, Quizlet vocab words and you can be done for the day. But here is the color-coded version of those sentences. So bellum is a dark red object of post. Post takes an accusative, whereas multos libros is the direct object. And the de paca et remediis is an ablative. Remember, de can be from or about. And belly is genitive, possessive probably of remediis, I suppose. Whereas number two, like I said, very familiar quote. Once you get rolling on it, you'll probably realize what the whole thing is because it's so familiar. But in the altissimus is the only word we don't have. It means the highest. So in the highest. Deo and hominibus boni are indirect objects. So something is giving or going to go to Deo and hominibus. And other than that, uh, it's, it's some pretty familiar vocabulary. So good luck working through those. And looking at the chapter 7 vocabulary words, making sure you're doing well with those. Other than that, I will see you on Wednesday. And uh, please do let me know if you want to set up any tutoring Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's very easy to get a Zoom session going. So you can ask your parents when a good time to do that would be. And we can set that up. And you can email me at Mr. Catalanello at LTA Eagles. All right, guys. I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you.